What's up, geeks and gamers? My name is Draymond, and welcome to Thorium Gaming. We're back with Knightly Valor, our efforts to make the Arturic legend that is the Great Bretonians, and I so love playing them, come to life and stave off the evil forces of the world while trying to make some friends and not completely lose a bunch of peasants in meaningless fights. The last few episodes, we've been going through and dealing with nothing but war. Like, it has been... 40k style, in the grim darkness of the far past, there is nothing but war. Because we've had orcs, we've had Marienburg, we've had the threat of the undead, but they're kind of backed off for right now. And recently, we've had the Norskins come in. I mean, come on, it's Wolfric the Wanderer, and he's coming with a lot of troops, but we're going to take him on today, and he's not going to be happy with this. And Lord Grimaldus, I don't know if we're going to get him back into this fight. I do not want to lose a lord right away. Especially since he's the second lord we've got, and we eventually have to deal with Lioness. And I mean, Lioness is going to be tough, because it's been captured by Musalon, the Red Duke, and the Vampire Counts. But there's some islands out there that eventually Grimaldus is going to go pick up for us. So essentially, it's time to get down to the nitty gritty of everything. We're going to just go and take on Wolfric. Looks like Grimaldus is actually going to get involved in the fight. And we'll see how this plays out, if he fights us or not. He's not going to fight us. We did have a Marienburg army there, but again, we've uh, kind of stalled it out. Now, this is usually a very, very, very bad idea. Engaging Wolfric with Grimaldus, but we cannot leave Wolfric there, and we have to completely destroy him. The lady so, Chaplain, when we get into this fight, and I'm going to endeavor to fight a lot more of these battles. Chaplain, your entire job in this is to not run away, because Bretonian knights don't run away, to get to the rally point so that when the troops show up, you're in position to be there. To inspire the men, and bring them glory and honor. But they're all the way over there, which means you're going to be running basically down and around the outside of the map. There's not much we can do right now. Except to try and get the good chaplain over to a place where he can actually do something. With our army coming in on the flank. Kind of just have to wait until everyone gets on the board before we can do much with them. Then we can set up a line and see about dealing with these Norskins. Alright, so I think that's all of our troops. So let's group our swordsmen up, our spearmen up. Of course, our knights that have been just doing so much work for us. Peasant archers who do not understand chivalry, so can get away with using those blasted ranged weapons. So much disdain for them, but that's kind of following into the role that Bretonians have. Only the peasants use ranged weapons because they have no concept of honor anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to get our Pegasus Knights to kind of come up here, and if the good chaplain does get engaged, they're going to go over and help him. But our Knights of the Realm, you guys are going to come up and set up right here to try and get a good counter charge off. Then we're going to move our field trebuchets into a position once both of them are on the map. Shouldn't be much longer now. There we go. And we're going to set you up essentially back here so you guys can start shooting as quickly as possible. And Grimaldus, you better run. Because, yeah, we need you to run and get involved in this fight. So we do not want you getting caught out on your own. And you're already kind of just running off down the back. Pretty safe behind our lines so far. The good part is, is they don't have any ranged weaponry to speak of. Because they're Norskins. So, all we have to worry about is spearmen. The only bad things in here are those skin wolves, the chariots, and the berserkers, wherever they are. There they are. And already our trebuchets are causing some problems. If they move any closer, they're going to get hit by volleys of arrows. I'm glad that these skin wolves are taking artillery fire. 
I don't really like directing the artillery, because then they tend to not work for me as well. They end up getting turned around and all that sort of stuff. So let's move our Knights of the Realm up a little bit. Because they're going to come in and they're going to try and charge us. Big thing we have to worry about right now is just holding the line. Let's just pause really quickly. Those skin wolves are essentially the big bads here. We're going to charge, which under normal circumstances would be rather silly, but there is a definite reason we're doing it. Because if we can get the charge off and then get our Pegasus Knights behind them, we'll be in a great position. We get Grimaldus over here. And I can get Lewin in to some place that's going to help us out. I do not want those skin wolves getting around and hitting our artillery. So if we can manage to tie them up in melee, that'd be great. Just like that. Wolfric's going to cause some damage no matter where he goes. But we can minimize that by winning the charges and clearing out this side as quickly as Bretonianly possible. The faster we can crush his infantry forces, the faster I can get Lewin over to fight him. So, that'll work out. And these skin wolves, I don't think they'll break, but we might be able to kill them off. In actuality, all we're going to lose is a bunch of peasants, which I'm okay with. Two of his units are routed. Let's get those spearmen over to help out our knights good little peasants and do their thing. And since the center battle is already won, I want those skin wolves dead, so Pegasus Knights, go get them. We've broken a lot of their army. Hopefully those Pegasus Knights will be able to finish off those skin wolves, because then even if they aren't completely destroyed, we can deal with them. I am king. Trebuchets are doing their thing. Now let's get Grimaldus up there just to give an aura of leadership to him. Let the Pegasus Knights deal with skin wolves. I think they have. And now they're going to come down and help deal with those chariots. Definitely having issues breaking Wolfric, but I didn't really expect us to be able to break him just naturally. At this point, everything comes down to tie everything up, try and get the morale to finally crack, and then deal with them. Faith is my armor. Grimaldus will get you to move up. Hopefully we'll be able to get you a bird. Tonian Warhorse here pretty quick. And the shield should be cooled down. The Marauders are breaking. Come on, break those Ice Wolf Chariots. There, they're broken and they're routed. But we have uh, done enough damage. We're not going to continue fighting the Norsemen. It's not the first time Bretonia has been invaded from the north, but that's how it's going to work. 154 men, most of which were peasants, compared to 608 losses for Wolfric. He kind of in our favor. I'm really happy about that. It's not because of my generalship, it's 
because the peasants actually did their job. They didn't run. And of course, because we're Bretonian, we've got to execute the captives, and that will knock Wolfric off the map for a while. And Blood Feuder, you defeated Wolfric in combat, so Grimaldus now has plus 10% charge, which is actually an amazing talent to have as the Bretonians. And he gained the Sword of Battle. And King Lewin gained the Worm Lance. So that's rather great. We can't get him a Barded Warhorse just yet, but we can get him the Knight's Vow. So as soon as we're able to recruit Knights, we can get him a Knightly Unit. We'll let King Lewin spend one turn in Koron. Regen his troops just a little bit. And we need 5,000 gold to upgrade our stables, but the good chaplain will take care of that by going after the fell cargo and any other nearby islands. Still kind of concerned with what Marienburg's doing. If they're trying to go down and mess with Leoness and Mousselon and the Red Duke in general, we can't let them do that. We have to claim everything that's within Bretonian lands, because, well, it's our lands. We can't really get him to join our confederation just yet, but he's vastly improving. So there's good news on our Trois front. And we do have more heraldries to unlock. It sucks that we have to get the heraldry of Leoness. It's just plus 10 chivalry at this point since Leoness was wiped out. Paravon's the next one on the list, but we're working on improved agricultural tools, so we get more gold income per turn, and that'll finish off next turn. So let's see what the other nations do, and we'll let them have their fun. And Ryan will sit down there, cleansing some of the corruption. It's not going to make a massive difference overall, we're still going to suffer losses going in to take on Musulon, but... Any way that we can screw with those vampire counts, even if it's just minor right now, will make the battle at Leoness slightly easier. With any luck, Marienburg will pull back from our lands. Oh, they're going to push through. And if they end up taking on Artois we're going to have to go back to war with them because, again, Bretonian lands. That is a Bretoni castle. Alright, so Carrick Ziflin. You know what? I'm okay with a non-aggression pact with you guys for right now. And Schiffroy, you better be able to hold up against Marienburg if it comes down to it. And there's an Orkwa there. It's not great. Alright, so income from farms has gone up a couple of percentage. What would you have of me? I really want to steal technology right now. Blocking the army doesn't really do much. Let's queue up what we're going to do next. Baston's in the center of Bretonia, so it's really, really helpful for us. I'm really tempted to get Death's Grip Decree, just so that when we start fighting the Vampire Counts, it's better. There's a lot of stuff that we can do with our peasants, though, that'll help us out. For right now, we'll grab the Heraldry of Paravon and see if we can get them on board. You require magic? What are the odds? Not very good odds that you'd wound him, so let's just get you to steal technology. And you failed. Got you some experience, though. Alright, good chaplain. Head on out and see if you can get us some gold. Scroll of Aramar. So that could go to Ryan and help us out with her. There's a couple more islands that are decently close, so I guess I can send you out to them. If anything happens, though, we'll get you to pull back, because I don't want to lose you just yet. Might be willing to sacrifice you later on, but for now, no. No, not, 
right now. And as for Lewin, might as well grab hard to hit as well. Very defensive off the bat, because they mostly get into cavalry pretty quickly. And then it's all assault for the first two here, and then leadership and more defense. It's the fact that he gets Bequi. And a lot of his other stuff is just incredible. So we'll have to deal with that in a little bit. For right now, though, since we don't have a Grail Chapel inside of Caron, I don't believe. Not quite yet, because we're working towards the next level of stables. Get you to pop out of the city so you don't gain the negative traits. And they really, really start to add up. Now, Ryan, just before we pass it on to the other nations, we'll give you that scroll. So that when you get into a fight next, it'll help you out. So many different banners this time through. So many different nations. The Empire States... I kind of lost where I was going with that one. Are they states or are they provinces? Provinces. So the Empire provinces, like all the ones that we're seeing right now, the different dwarven factions, of course, all the different Bretonian dukedoms. Orc nations, vampire nations. With any luck, we'll be able to siege Leoness long enough that when we take it, it will be able to be brought down with a good set of battering rams and a fair amount of good cavalry. Don't know for sure just yet, though. For right now, Chaplain, you're going to continue going out, even though it's hurting you to do so. feel bad about that, but sometimes things are what they are. And there's a Skull Reef up there. That would be great right now. I don't know if we can really do it. But in Corone, we're a thousand away, so next turn we'll be able to do it. King Lewin will stay close. We're now getting a bunch of control back. Commandment, Lewin himself, and the buildings are all helping towards it, but we were very, very close to another rebellion. Right now, I'm kind of curious as to what's going down. Going down? Going on? Going down? Going down. We're going to go with going down. I was kind of hoping that Bastan would come in and strike at Muslon, but it doesn't look like they're going to, which is a little bit of a shame. And we are not upgrading any settlements right now. We've got to get that next rank of stable. With the nightly code. Nightly vow. That's the words I'm looking for. It didn't sound right right off the bat. And yes, this is my favorite race and the one I played on the tabletop before the age of we don't talk about it. And you'd think I would remember all this stuff like it was second nature. Sometimes. Oh, Artois and Paravon are going at it. We've got to stay with Artois because we need to confederate with them as quickly as possible. And that will up their perception of us, their respect of us. I don't actually know what that is. Affinity? So many different words for the same kind of idea. Now, if Vicious Gobspit takes out Baston, which I really, really hope they don't, they may just capture that city, in which case we could send our king down to take it back, because orcs are much less of a threat, and then the good chaplain could go in and start rallying up some more knights of the realm. Well, knights errant, anyway. Someone has claimed the Sword of Cain. That's going to be one thing we are going to have to watch out for in this campaign. Whoever has that sword has a very, very powerful character. There's an extra 5,000 gold pieces. 
Which is going to be a... How did we get unchivalrous? Probably because we just broke a pact with Paravon. That was a no-win situation, which kind of sucks. So we're going to have to build that back up, and one good way to do that is to get our stables up so we can start building more knights. And are we able to build a Grail Chapel in addition? We are able to build a Grail Chapel in addition, so we're going to do that. And then, as soon as we can, we'll upgrade Languil to get some more stuff going in from there. The lady's chosen. So when you're just going to kind of skip this turn... You honor me. There's a lot going on. A big hit of chivalry like that kind of sucks this early on. I knew it was going to hurt us, but I didn't think it was going to hurt us that bad. So the lack of leadership is definitely going to suck, but the control loss is even worse. It's not going to completely screw us over right now, but we now have to pay attention to it, when I really wish we didn't have to. Next few turns are just going to be mostly trying to stop this from going completely off the rails. And build up to the point where we can get some stuff done. All of a sudden that free chivalry for Leoness's emblem doesn't sound so bad. But probably what we're going to do is get the Winter Woes Decree, or the Darkest Nights Decree, or the Deep Woods, or the Mountains. So we can fight Orcs, Vampires, Norskins, or Wood Elves. And Baston is down. So there's a chance for us to go and capture a city. That makes two of their heraldries worthless. They did take it, they didn't just destroy it. So we can't have that. So just like in the days of Gilles the Uniter, we are going to go and take Baston back. Well, our good chaplain buddy is out collecting some goodies for us. Well, Charmed Shield, since I think you don't have any special items right now. Well, you have a sort of battle, but we'll give you the Charmed Shield because you picked it up. Missile resist, or missile parry, and damage resistance, that's... Not a bad thing. Is there any... We can give you a bailiff. That'll help out. And then we'll probably send you right back to... Corone. See if we can get you the devoted title. Really does help out off the bat. And then next turn we'll be able to upgrade Languil. So we can get another slot opened up and get us a water mill. Because that'll allow us to get our farm upgraded. Of course, my chair is still squeaky. And then we'll be able to upgrade to a landed estate after that. It completely takes the legs out from under the industry for the local region. But it gives us a lot more, and we've been working towards that right now. Ryan, right now, we're going to get you to come back and link up with the good chaplain, because he's going to need you if things go sideways, especially since the good king is going off to deal with some orcs that took over one of our castles. The good thing is, is that with the orcs taking out Baston, which, well, it's not a good thing, because those are Bretonian lives and that's Bretonian land, and we will take it back. But the good thing is, is when we do take Cap Castle Baston, Capel Bapon, I swear I can English, as soon as we take out Castle Baston and reclaim it for our people, that's another two regiments of infantry that we can put out. Well, peasants in general. Could be archers, could be swordsmen, could be whatever. Every city that you capture gives us a couple of more. Ah, and Ryan, you got wounded! No! It's ironic that it was a white that was doing it, but still. Alright, so... Wizenland and the Empire Confederated. Ryan's been wounded. And we have a Grail Shrine completed. You know what, Lewin? We need you there as quickly as humanly possible. 
So go your march stance. Takes you away from the vulnerable cities, but the orcs kind of deserve it. And we need to take them out as quickly as we can. And Grimaldus, you got to get back to shore so we can start gearing you up. Now with the Grail Chapel completed, we're in a good place, and we can upgrade Languil to start bringing in a lot more gold. It's always tight for the Bretonians at the very start of the campaign. It does get better later on, but there's that. Now what's going to end up happening is we're going to use the next turn to move Luin closer, and then on the turn after that we'll just straight up declare war and go after them. And we're going to get that done before this episode is over. We cannot let Castle Beston, of all places, stay in orcish hands. We kept them out of the Grey Mountains, and that is where Gilles the Uniter went out and completely cleared the lands of Bretonia. With Landuin and, I think, the Lord of Lioness? I know it was Landuin for sure. I'm really tempted to grab my book. I haven't read it in a while, anyway. It's great Arcturic lore. Oh, this is very, very, very tough. We can't afford to be at war with Musalon right now, so that's going to be another chivalry hit. And we're going to have to let Bordeaux take care of that. And then we're going to go in and stomp the Red Duke. So, immediately after we get Paravon's heraldry, it's definitely going to be Death's Door Decree. And then we're going after them. So it didn't hit our chivalry too much. Champion of the lady. Now if we go back to normal stance, we can actually reach Castle Baston. The lady and my right. I shall we could go, go straight into it right now. But we're just going to create a couple of setups, and we're going to continue the siege. If the orcs decide to come out, they're just a bunch of savages. The castle itself has a large garrison, but we can defeat it on the open field better than we can inside, so we're going to just try and sit them out and get them to come out after us. Because if that happens, then we're in a way better position than they are. And we won't lose as many Pegasus Knights, because we will lose Pegasus Knights doing that. Once we get 4,000 gold, we'll be able to build that up. We're going to have Paravon's Heraldry here. Should help bring it around. It's kind of tough right now. We're really not able to push too hard because of the way that the campaign starts for us. Unlike the Azure or any of the other major races, we start off in a really tough position. It's... Very, very, very finicky. When they need something from me. What is and Middenland declared war on us. The dwarves have ever been friends. And the dwarves have ended a non-aggression pact. So, like I said, it's very, very tough for the Bretonians right off the bat. And they did come out. So we're going to fight this. So I'm not too worried about the size of their force. It's more the fact that they're going to have a few annoying things. Vicious Gobspit himself is our primary target. Can't see where the orcs are set up, but they got reinforcements coming in from that flank. So what we're going to want to do is set up somewhere over here so that our trebuchets have range. And we can kind of hold this flank. So we'll group them first and give them a fairly decent line of sight. Oh, I'll allow them to shoot. Actually, come to think of it, the orcs are probably going to want to group up as much as possible. But we don't know where they're going to go. <laughs> so I'm going to go with my first instinct. So consider that me just babbling because I can babble. I have a big feeling that our Knights of the Realm are going to be doing a lot of work. Of course, I want to get the archers up as high as we can without 
too much of an issue. Get their ranges sorted out. Should probably tilt this line back just a little bit. <laughs> we don't want them sorted out in march lines, no. We want them to be on an angle to protect the archers, but not too far out of the way. The Pegasus Knights are going to be the ones that are going to do the real work, I think. I know the Knights of the Realm are going to do a lot, but the Pegasus Knights will probably be the ones that do the most. Are they actually coming at us with the smaller force? Because if that's the case... We might be able to end this before it even starts. Alright, let's pause really quick and get this set up for a nice big cavalry charge. And we'll let our Pegasus Knights take on those Savage Orcs. Then we can recall all our cavalry back to the lines. I think they're going to try and run back to the other orcs that are coming in. For right now, we've got them on an open field, and this is why I wanted to engage them out here. They can't outrun Bretonian cavalry on an open field. It's not going to end well for them. We just have to worry about them getting involved and getting bogged down. Let our cavalry do a bunch of work. See how many of them we can knock off. Really, the big goal here is to try and take out their leader. If we can kill the orc before their reinforcements can get here, we're in a great position. And unfortunately, we didn't manage to get that done. Withdraw. Because now we're in a position where we're going to start losing guys to stuff that we can't really counter. It was worth a shot, and we did maul them pretty good off the bat. I mean, there's a few knights down on the field, but not a lot compared to how many orcs were killed. That's pretty much how it goes with the Bretonians. Let's get you guys set up over there. We'll get the Pegasus Knights set up. Loom, we'll get you set down there. And now we have a ton of orcs coming after us. The morale seems to be really, really, really low, though, which is weird. Looks like they're trying to push the left flank with all their good stuff. That should see those spiders off a little bit, I think. Alright, I guess it's time to get stuck in. King Lewin can kill the Orc War Boss. We're in a good position. 
What I need to have happen over on this flank here, though, is for them to start retreating so I can set up for a s flank and counter charges. Essentially, it's going to be charge, pull back, charge, pull back, charge, pull back, break the morale as much as you can. What orders? To Ooh, those Knights of the Realm are getting really hurt. I really don't want to lose any Knights of the Realm units, so we're going to be playing it a little bit careful on this flank. Ready, as you say. We sell the lady. This point is going to come down to who can do the most damage in the shortest amount of time possible. And currently, they're winning. What I really need to do is kill that Warlord. If he manages to get outside of the... There we go. Those Pegasus Knights on a charge should be able to kill him. And then it's just try to break as many of them as you can, kill off the archers. Come on, Pegasus Knights, kill him off. There we go. So that was a lot bloodier than I thought it was going to be, but Vicious went down. So, that was awesome. Lost a lot more knights than I wanted to. Both units got pretty mauled, and we lost a lot of peasants, but... They're easy to replace, cold as that sounds. We killed a lot more than we lost, though. And their warlord was taken down. So, that's definitely going to be a good thing. Hopefully that means that we took the entire castle. I guess not. I was kind of hoping that that would have flipped the castle to us, but I guess we didn't do enough damage to them. So, Armor of Civil Steel, Heraldry of Paravon. Just cutting into the deficit of honor that we have. Oh, Heraldry of Bordeaux is not going to do us much good right now. How much are we making per turn? Not a whole heck of a lot. So let's actually go with wider plows for now, and then we can get Death Script Decree. My reputation proceeds. And Grimaldus. Oh, you're in March stance, and I can't take you out of it till next turn. That's not going to be helpful. Furt Horned. I love orc names, and I hate orc names. So we mauled them pretty badly. Then luck we'll be able to hold on to this and keep it rolling. Really, really not want to see those two knightly units get hurt much more. Without a leader, I don't think they can actually sally out. So we'll see how it goes. Definitely don't want to break the siege, so... Let's give it over to the other nations and see what they do. With any luck, those orcs will just go blah 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 and stay inside their castle this turn. Because we can wait them out. I'm fully willing to let them start suffering attrition and wait them out to win. Now, if Artois is coming in to help us out, please... Oh, they're raiding? Why would you raid? That's just a loss of chivalry. Don't do that, Artois. Especially considering I'm going to try and convince you to join us next turn. And if that happens, that army is getting in there and helping us out. And then we're going after Muslim. It would be really nice if Artois would just 
confederate with us this turn. Alright, so if we give it to your nobles have stumbled upon lush fields filled with game, a beautiful hunting ground. The local peasants say it's farmland, but the nobles do so want to hunt. Either we get a charge bonus for cavalry with greater upkeep, or... You know what? Let them hunt. It's sad, but we gotta do it. Now, what are the odds you join us? Come on, it's a long shot, but... Oh, so close, but so far. And Bordeaux does not like us right now, but it's improving. We'll, we'll improve it over time. And now we can finally go over to our primary castle. Grimaldus, congratulations, you're finally going to have troops. No peasants even, but just some troops. Ironically enough, a couple units of Knights of the Realm. Blessings of the lady or Knights Errand, I should say. I should know this. I really should. Let's make it three. Get you three triple s copper ranked in it. units so that we can go on through it. And we should be able to hold out for there. But we should probably leave that until next time. It's been a lot of small skirmishes and a couple of fights and a lot of stuff this week. But we're going to ramp up over time. I'm loving the fact that I'm back playing Bretonians again. So if you enjoyed the video, guys, please consider hitting that like button. If you'd like to join up with the 232, possibly see your name pop up in one of these Let's Plays, just hit that subscribe button, and make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss when a new video goes out. And remember, guys, life is a game, so play to win. And until next time, take care.